So hello everyone, so moving over to video number two now, so I'm just going to carry on go through some of your comments. So another one of you says that your two biggest interests is listening to music and watching old TV programmes. You follow an alphabetical schedule of listening, viewing. Your evenings are reserved for watching DVDs. The routines seem to overcome the agony of choice. As rather than wondering what to watch next, you just follow the schedule. Part of your pleasure is knowing what is coming next in a TV show. You're reluctant to watch new things unless they have links to, to, have what, to what you have watched before. So yeah, so you have a very clear routine there. Um, and I like when you say routines seem to overcome the agonies of choice. So that's interesting because, again, that feeds back into the executive functioning problems that are common in autism. And part of the executive functioning difficulties is knowing how to deal with choice and um, too many options. Um, so falling back on routines and familiarity means that there are less processing demands. You don't have to process so many things. It's a lot more simple. And that's part of the reason why routines can be such a big part of an autistic person's life is because it um, brings order to chaos, essentially. Um, and that makes sense, considering the difficulties processing the world. So, so a need for routine is very much makes sense within a context of autistic neurology. Um, I mean, anyone, in actual fact, even non-autistic people, if they're, if they're going through kind of a times that are very chaotic or stressful will tend to become more routine based. That's kind of a common human kind of drive, um, even among non-autistic people. But for autistic people, we're living in a state of chaos 24-7. It's like a kind of congenital state of chaos, like we're born into a state of chaos um, that most people who aren't autistic only experience maybe at certain points in their life. Um, autistics experience it all the time. So it follows from that that you're probably going to have a really strong need for routine if you're autistic because you're going through chaos all the time whereas a non-autistic person might normally be quite spontaneous and happy-go-lucky but then when they go through a really stressful experience might suddenly become quite rigid so again maybe they get kind of taste or flavour just a little bit of a taste maybe of that kind of state of being although they're not in that state of being all the time and an autistic person is Um, another one of you, you say you wonder what my thoughts are on special schools versus mainstream uh, that will obviously take a whole video in and of itself so I think I might come back to that question and maybe just do a video devoted to that if that's okay because um, um, I'll have to think a little bit about that um, so I think I will do just dedicate a video to that topic in the meantime, maybe people watching this can let me know some of your thoughts on that in the comments as well. It'd be quite interesting. What, what are your thoughts on um, special versus mainstream schools? Um, so you mentioned that you managed to go for a supported walk recently with a therapist on the phone down to your local harbour. This lasted over an hour and you wanted to share this as you have very similar OCD experience in terms of um, uh, contamination OCD. Um, during the pandemic and knowing that you've been going out for walks every day has really helped motivate you so um, that's great news so thank you for sharing um, and that's really very very positive that you've managed to do that so onwards and upwards um, and I'm really pleased that I've managed to motivate you a little bit to do that um, and yeah um, just onwards and upwards really um, but take it small small steps and it's best to take it in small steps because otherwise you could get overwhelmed like don't try to push yourself too much at first just do very very small steps um that's really amazing um so well done i yeah i go out for my walk um once a day um for between half an hour and an hour just around the same old places though um, I haven't really managed to deviate much from that since the whole pandemic began. I have deviated slightly, um, but it is still quite rigid. Um, so I really hope I can at some point kind of 
have one of those moments like what you described where I kind of break out of my comfort zone. I'm sure it will come eventually. Um, but yeah, well done. Thanks for sharing. Um, that's really good to hear. Um, I just wanted to read out one of these comments here because this was quite interesting. And um, one of you said that uh, you made, that I made you laugh in a nice way when I said that most people wouldn't know that I have autism. Um, you are 50 years old, female, and are also autistic. And you say you're just like me in the way you speak, what you're wearing, um, style of conveying information, without doing all the very dramatic performance, normal, without doing all the very dramatic performance of normal female drama. Um, you say that I'm very much female autistic. You are very much female autistic, you, you say about me, in a way that you present yourself. Um, so that's really interesting that um, you've identified similarities there between yourself and myself. That's really interesting. Um, so thank you for sharing. Um, on the sensory front, you say you have issues with sound, smell and touch. Um, and that you wear fleeces with a hood, like I'm doing right now as it's like wearing a teddy bear and that you can pull the hood over your ears. Um, that's really interesting that you say that. Yeah, I've got a hood up right now. That's really funny, I'm exactly the same. <laughs> I love wearing hoods and uh, I love wearing um, big coats. Like, I like to be completely swathed, like wrapped up. And part of the reason why I like having hoods on is because it covers my, I don't know, it just kind of makes me feel secure and like snug. Like I'm being kind of swaddled. And also, when I go out wearing my big coat, particularly when I put the hood up, it kind of blocks sound. Like, it almost acts like a white noise buffer because I've got, like, the, all I've got is the sound of my ears rubbing against the hood. It blocks out all of the other sounds but provides a kind of predictable kind of white noise kind of of my ears bumping against the hood and I don't hear the other stuff. And it kind of makes me feel um, just kind of wrapped up and secure. That's part of the reason why I hate the summer because obviously in the summer I can't really do that. Um, I could wear a hat but it's not quite the same. Um... Yeah, I like covering up. I, I like having lots of clothes on. Um, it takes me ages to transition to wearing a T-shirt because I, I feel naked when I take clothes off. And, I, and that's the opposite pattern to some autistics. And it's interesting, you obviously have a similar sensory profile to me in that regard. Because um, there are some autistics who hate wearing clothes and will strip off and like not like clothing. But I, I have the opposite profile because I like wearing lots of layers. Um, I like that feeling of being weighted down. Um, so yeah, that's interesting that you share that. Um, I think that's also part of the reason why I have that problem with like having my feet flat against the floor and why I tiptoe walk when I don't have shoes on for exactly the same reason. I need to have shoes or lots of socks on my feet to feel kind of... I mean, I'll tiptoe walk even with socks on my feet. I need to have shoes before I feel grounded. But um, before I can walk, you know, my feet on a, flat on the ground, I need to wear shoes. Um, although I'm getting, although I'm not as bad as that, as that regard when I was when I was younger. Um, oh yeah, you also say you could pull cuffs over your hands. Yeah, you can scrunch hands on the cuffs. You said that the thing that made you laugh was you saying that most people wouldn't know you have autism as you mask, whilst only filming the bottom half of your face and camera going in and out of focus. So-called neurotypical women film in full hair and makeup and they spend hours posing with the best camera shot and you say that it's nice um, to see that it's nice that I don't do that in a world full of actors um, there's no pretense and you say you like that uh, so thanks for that um, I take that as a compliment um, <laughs> um, I don't wear makeup I just can't be asked to wear makeup like I did go through a phase when I was younger of wearing it. Um, when I was um, in my early teens, um, late childhood, early teens, I actually asked for makeup and I actually got a makeup set um, at Christmas time. I remember I got it from Argos. It was like a pink heart shaped children's makeup set. Um, and I did go through a phase of like wanting to wear makeup, but I think that was because. I don't know, I guess I sort of saw it as fun and like, I don't know, like um, a sign of growing up, you know, um, it had a kind of appeal, I guess. Um, 
I overdid it though, I actually looked a bit like a tart because I put way too much blush on my cheeks. <laughs> um, and then I stopped wearing makeup and then I went through a time in my 20s um, where I decided to wear it again. Um, and then I just thought, this is too much effort and it also costs a lot of money and I just can't be asked to constantly buy makeup and I've got better, spe better things to spend my money on. It takes too much time, I can't be asked for all of that. It clogs up your pores, you have to like wash it off and stuff. It gets with your clothes. Um, I just stopped, so I don't bother anymore. And I think particularly, obviously since the pandemic, I've just maybe just become, I don't know, a bit more true to myself as well, maybe. Um, and I just can't be asked for wearing makeup. So I stopped completely. Um, and I don't think I'm going to go back to it. Um, I don't dye my hair for the same reasons. It's too much. I just can't be asked to buy dye. It's too much hassle. Also, um, yeah, I just can't be asked for it. I'll grey naturally. There's nothing wrong with grey hair. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I uh, can't be asked for all of that. Um, and yeah, I guess I just, I am very much take what you get sort of thing. You know, like putting on an act doesn't really occur to me because why would I put on an act? You know, I just, I just am as I am. Um, but yeah, thank you for that comment. I, I took it as a compliment and, <laughs> and um, yeah, I guess my videos are a little bit very amateurish, you know, I don't do that whole kind of like um, performance in front of the camera thing because I just can't be asked for it, it's just too much energy and bother, quite frankly. But anyway, I'll come back to some more of your comments another time and thank you for watching.